When it first released, L.A. Noire felt like it would change the video game industry forever. It was the first and so far only game to use the expensive motion scan technology, a method that captured real life actors' faces using a ring of 32 cameras. The results in 2011 were unlike anything we'd seen up to that point. Yes, the bodies were captured separately, leading to a disconnect between body and face, but it was a big step towards some truly authentic performances in a game. This made it possible to see every nuance in a character's face, a rapid blink, a quivering chin, or even flaring of nostrils, all tying into the interrogation mechanic of the game. But with publishing rights finally ending up with Rockstar Games, L.A. Noire ultimately took seven years to complete. I owned a gun, yes, but, but, but it was stolen in a burglary a couple years ago. Years on from its original launch, in 2017 we now have a remastered version on PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. The real star of the show is of course Nintendo's hybrid console, which marks the first time we've been able to play the game on a portable machine. But just how well does it stack up to the original PS3 release and other remastered editions? And finally, how does the game run on top tier equipment like Xbox One X? Built with PS3's cell processor in mind, this game happened to run best on Sony's last gen hardware. PS3 managed to run a massive open world built around an accurate Los Angeles city with fully functioning day-night cycles, weather, physics, wandering NPCs and traffic systems. All this meant a heavy reliance on the machine's unique satellite processing units, SPUs, which does have a knock-on effect for the quality of the Switch port. Indeed, parts of this Switch release are notably better than the PS3 original, but sadly there's also some obvious drawbacks. Let's start with the good news first. On Switch you get a fully playable version of L.A. Noire with a huge detailed world to explore, unlike anything we've seen on a handheld. Surprisingly, this also renders at 1920x1080 when connected to a TV by docking the system, much like the base PS4 release in fact. However, it's a dynamic resolution, meaning Switch will scale the pixel output based on rendering load, and at stress points that means a low point of 1440x1080. In other words, the game lowers its resolution on the horizontal axis alone, and faced with a busy street, it drops to 75% of the pixels overall. Still, even at 1440x1080 at lowest, Switch is still resolving far more detail than PS3's native 1280x720. Interestingly, Switch's portable mode, which I'll cover in more detail later in this video, uses a similar idea. You get a native 1280x720 on Switch to match its screen, giving it the same resolution as a PS3. However, the game will again scale down to 75% of this on the horizontal axis to 960x720 when it needs to. On Switch, there are plenty of differences between docked and portable play otherwise, but for now, let's see how the docked Switch visuals compare to the original PS3 release. First up, there's the upgrade in textures. The Switch release is a mixed bag in this sense, in that it tends to use PS3 grade textures for characters, cars, objects and so on. Across the board, it's usually a close match, but there are also spots where it's clearly improved. Take this shot as an example, where Switch's higher RAM means ground textures use a higher grade asset compared to PS3. Now let's be clear, Switch falls very short of the PS4's top texture preset, but at least it goes a step beyond the original release. Put into example, the textures on a base PS4, including character faces, are across the board much sharper and use the high preset in every case, whereas Switch is something of a mixture. This even translates to small details like curbs and train tracks, which are again massively improved over PS3 as we drive down this road. Again, Switch's 4GB of RAM comes to the rescue in size and bandwidth next to PS3's two 256MB partitions of RAM. Textures aren't on the level of Sony and Microsoft's latest consoles, but it's a satisfying step up on Switch, and there's plenty of added details across the road itself missing on PS3. The next upgrade on Switch relates to shadows. The method of shading is drastically changed in this remastered edition, and Switch moves away from the sharp stencil-like outlines of PS3 to a softer, more diffuse style of shadow. It's blurrier, and there is some speckled dithering artifacts towards the edges of character shadows during daytime. Switch's implementation may be a lower quality version of what we get on PS4, but at a distance it's also a more realistic effect than the original PS3 release. Of course, as you can see here, PS4 goes one step further with a higher resolution setting of the same technique used on Switch. Put into example, shadows still have a diffused look on a standard PS4, but with less dithered artifacting. A new technique is used for ambient occlusion too, so long as it's docked, Switch opts for a subtler method than PS3, which often looked overbearing with these thick, dithered contours of shade. It spoilt the look of some scenes on the original, and even added shade to areas where it simply made no sense. On Switch, it's more straightforward. 
If there's a gap between objects, it's filled lightly with shade, and characters get a very faint silhouette. It radically changes the look of the game next to the blankets of shade on PS3, and it's a great improvement. Meanwhile, a regular PS4 again adopts a similar approach to Switch, with a very slightly thicker pocket of shade around objects, though the difference in practice is minor. So for the competition between PS3 and Switch, that's higher resolution, better textures in spots, and upgraded ambient occlusion. It's a pretty good deal, but this is where the benefits stop and the downgrades begin on Switch. The fact is, this is an engine built with PS3 in mind, and the architecture of Switch is different enough that aspects of the game don't make the jump perfectly. The main disappointment is, even while docked, Switch often has worse draw distances compared to PS3. Take a look as we drive down this busy road. Objects like benches, fire hydrants, and small bushes fizzle into view at closer range on Nintendo's machine. Likewise for buildings in the distance here, there's a cutback in how far a field switch is able to render the city. Now curiously, trees render in at the exact same points as we drive down this simpler road, but it's also hard to ignore some glaring issues with the streaming of assets on Switch, where textures and lights pop in more obviously than PS3. If we look ahead on this first mission, the entire building site here is a blurry mess until we get much closer. You have to remember of course, there's never been an open world game as ambitious as this on Switch, but this is a cutback too far that really intrudes on the immersion. All this is so far based on Switch's docked TV play. Even with the cutbacks in draw distance, it's still a beautiful, fully featured version of L.A. Noire that plays well. It's in many ways equivalent to the PS3 version at a higher resolution, and it shares many of the original's drawbacks. For starters, reflections all run at 15 frames per second across the tops of cars and shop windows. Just like PS3, the game runs at 30 FPS on Switch, but the refresh is halved down to 15 FPS for these elements. It really sticks out when you put the camera this close, and for perspective, PS4 runs all reflections at a full 30fps, and at a higher resolution than either Switch or PS3. Curiously, the refresh is also half to 15fps for NPCs in the far distance, but this goes for every version of the game including Xbox One X. From here, the differences between versions are only slight. Switch falls short in terms of draw distance next to PS3 and of course PS4, the only real contrast that bears mention otherwise is that Bloom is ramped up on PS4 compared to the Dock Switch and PS3 editions, meaning neon signs stick out more at night. Overall, it's a small bonus for PS4, but the fact PS4 holds a native 1080p with high grade textures, better shadows, and ambient occlusion are the main benefits for that version. At this point, we've established the Switch version isn't without its flaws, but it turns in a great experience given the technology at hand. As far as docked play goes, the last question is, how does it perform compared to the PS3 original and the PS4 release? Fortunately, the game often runs at a fixed 30fps on Switch, but there are difficulties holding that once too many NPCs and cars enter the screen. Consider it a possible CPU bottleneck. Cases with lots of characters stood around one area cause Switch to go to the low 20s. The bad news here is, when stressed, Switch actually runs worse than PS3 ever did. It's struggling to cope with the open-ended nature of this recreation of LA, and all the interactions with AI plus physics on cars cause drops below PS3's number. Meanwhile, a base PS4 holds out at a straight 30fps all the way through with no issues at all. Now, Switch's drops below 30fps are a real shame, but there are issues which further deepen the problem. For one, that 30fps cap is paired with uneven frame pacing, meaning a single one-off drop frame can queue a bout of frame time spikes to 16 milliseconds, causing an erratic appearance to motion. It's a problem I've seen on a few Switch titles now, including the recent Doom port, and it just adds another distraction to what's otherwise an impressive showcase for the system. The other issue here is, when the Switch version does drop below 30fps, the actual speed of gameplay is also affected. Take this chase scene as an example. Taking a route through a busy park, it feels like Detective Phelps is running through treacle on Switch. PS3, by comparison, simply chops frames out, but keeps the momentum of play at the usual rate. It's telling that gameplay on Switch falls behind in this side-by-side -side comparison, simply because the entire rate of play is slowing down. It's much like the final knockout punch in a fighting game. In this case, it's really not welcome, and makes the game much harder to control on Switch. At this point, the Switch release comes across as a mixed bag. 
especially factoring in some shaky performance while docked. The saving grace here really is that it's a portable console as well, and the experience on a smaller screen often makes these cutbacks harder to pick out. Whether that's the frame rate drops or the draw distance and texture streaming issues, it simply doesn't stick out as much on that 6 inch display. As I've mentioned, Switch in portable mode runs at a dynamic 720p, scaling down to 960x720 where it needs to. This of course runs at 30fps still, and yes, the frame rate drops of the dock mode are present here. The frame rate falls to a similar degree to around the lower 20fps region when pushed with taxing areas. Again, it suggests a CPU limit in the machine, given the CPU clock stays the same whether it's docked or portable. There's really little change as far as performance is concerned, and despite the lower resolution, you'll still bump into some sluggish passages of play. That's not to say the game runs poorly, most of the time Switch runs at a straight 30fps while in portable mode, but don't expect perfection. Impressively, outside of a resolution drop, you get the same shadow quality, textures and even reflections while running the machine as a pure handheld. However, there are three areas that do get paired back by comparison to dock play, the most obvious of which being draw distance. A simple drive forward shows trees popping in at closer range in portable mode, a reasonable cutback given the huge scale of the world. Even so, played on Switch's smaller screen, you're less likely to notice that distant detail anyway, making it a good optimization call for saving performance. The second point is ambient occlusion. Looking at the world at large, the effect is simply removed while played in portable mode. It makes sense given how taxing the effect can be, but compared to the docked experience there's a lighter appearance to the world as a result. It's another reasonable cutback, considering the amount of detail you can actually spot on the smaller Switch display. Meanwhile, the third and final downgrade is a very simple one. Texture filtering takes a hit in quality, and looking across the road here, the filtering cascade is nearer to the camera while running Switch as a portable. As it goes, this is still a remarkable turnout for Switch while played on the go. We've already had Skyrim and Zelda Breath of the Wild as examples of open world games on the console, but L.A. Noire is in many ways a more ambitious game. The world is filled with so many moving parts, the vehicles, the detailing of the world as you drive down the high streets, and of course the motion scan driven interrogation scenes in between. Comparing Switch docked under a TV against PS4 isn't a flattering comparison, especially considering the performance, but taken as a portable experience and even with its visual cutbacks, there simply isn't anything like it. To wrap up then, it's worth taking a quick look at Xbox One X. We've so far used the base PS4 to show the game running at max settings compared to Switch. To top that, Xbox One X does one very obvious thing to better this. You get a boost to a full 3840 by 2160 Now the game still runs at 30fps, and textures and shadows are the same compared to a base PS4, but it all holds up surprisingly well at 4K. Paired with an obligatory increase in texture filtering quality, it's a fairly bare bones vote of support for the console, but effective. A secondary plus to this release is a change in the way ambient occlusion is rendered on Xbox One X. It lightens the effect across the scene and bizarrely brings it more in line with the effect on Switch. Otherwise, it's the same deal, and outside of PC, inevitably, this is the best way to enjoy the game on console. But that's all I have for today. If you did find this analysis useful or insightful in any way, please do let me know with a like or subscribe. And as ever, we have the original source file for this video at our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. Until next time though, thanks for watching. That you Bukowski? Go on through. Parking lot straight ahead. I need to get back to work, officer. The detectives are here now. You repeat to them what you told me. I did the right thing by calling this in. I'm just a working stick. Just give them your story and you'll be all right. This is your first case, Phelps. It's okay to admit it if you're stumped. If you don't know what to do next, just come talk to me and we'll see what we can figure out. Thanks, Stefan. You're okay.